Oh, interesting. Yeah, they've, they've switched it up a couple of times. You know, they had Pycat drafting, fucking Mad drafted for a while, but loaded back to the drafting slot. That's that's quite interesting. Queen of Pain is the first ban. That is no surprise to me at all. I think uh, the stats on S4's Queen of Pain has been 9-0 and zero this patch, yeah. or uh, over the past couple of months anyway. It's been ridiculous. Yeah, it's been pretty amazing when they run the Shadow Fiend and the Queen of Pain combination. And also the Bristol back ban coming out there. I, I think it's just something that they don't want to deal with in case they would get the Wisp first pick. But as it turns out, Secret decides to ban the Wisp. So, and now with the first pick, Leshrac, we see some interesting second picks coming out from Team Secret. Bloodseeker. Yeah. Now, what do you Man, feel I about would this not hero? This. It, I think it's. A, I'm sorry. It, it's kind of been a pub stomp hero, but in competitive play, where, where do you think it fits? Um, I think it definitely has a spot in the scene. Like, I just, I think it's really, really strong. But teams have not just learned how to util utilize it yet. Uh, we saw 4AC run it a lot, actually, in the TI qualifiers. Mm -hmm. And they, I think they showcase that the hero can do a lot of work uh, when it's played correctly. So, uh, uh, Secret is a team which I don't think they have practiced that much lately. But I'm sure they have a plan in mind with the Blazing to pick up. There was another team, I can't remember who Exist was playing for at the time, but you know, the German player Exist, he played a lot oh, of Bloodseeker. Yeah. Stadia Stasia have loved the hero as well. We've had, you know, Miracle, we've had Five Ever playing it, a couple of other teams. It's it can get ridiculously strong. You know, if you don't shut him down, he can just run rampant through your lineup. But Les Rank yeah. and Gyro, the first couple of pickups from Alliance. I, I like the fact that they banned out Zai's Bristleback though, because even though he's great on heroes like Clockwork, you know, long range initiators on the off lane, his bristleback yeah. is really nuts. Yeah, his Bristleback is really good. Not to mention also the RTC and the S4 Bristlebacks are not that too shabby as well, so oh, yeah. just all, it's a really solid ban against Team Secret, I feel. That's a good point, because they run it mid with uh, RTC as well, don't they? Yeah, they run it with the Wisp combination, they run it solo against Wisp tiny lanes and stuff like that, so yeah, it's a real solid ban from Alliance, I feel. Now, what do you feel about that Zeus ban? I, I just think it's a ban they, they put because of the Bloodseeker. Do you agree? Ah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because like the the combination can get quite ridiculous with the life steal we get from the from the blood ridge I think it's called yeah yeah uh, and, the and the damage yeah amplification when you get refresher and it just gets it just gets so hard to deal with some serious target advance here as uh, the tusk has banned out again against Zai we we saw their tusk techies uh, a while back over in China that was kind of interesting but coming oh, back yeah. to the bloodseeker when he first sort of made his foray into the scene I think it was the end of last year start of this year whatever it was when he started going for the Yules build before you know the full race car go Sanji Asha BKB yeah. there was a lot of talk I guess before his nerf as well there was a lot of talk about him with Venomancer him with Zeus him with Leshrac even the amount of damage he can do is, is pretty ridiculous but that yeah. the, the range on Blood Rage got uh, nerfed a tiny bit I think it was down from like 1400 range to 900 or something like that now Okay, yeah, well, yeah. that combination with Listrike has to be really fearful, I think. But also, not to mention, it can be pretty good against Listrike. You have a Silence, you have the Rapture, so yeah. Like, you get an early BKB, maybe a Blade Mill, you can just go walk in there. With a Grave on top of you as well. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I would actually not be surprised for Team Secret to run, like, a, a Puppy or Kuroki Bloodseeker in the jungle or something, but we'll, we'll have to see. Okay, well, with that, uh, with that amount of mid-game aggression and just sort of running into these towers and funny pick-offs with Hookshot, does Team Secret, they're, they're lacking a little bit in, in magic damage right here. They don't have big AoE nukes. They don't really have anything to lock someone down for too long outside of that Hookshot. Do you think they'll start to you know, go that way now? And if that's the case, Alliance with the Vengeful Spirit, what's their kind of counter push going to be? Mm, I'm not sure, yeah, I would definitely agree that Team Secret is looking to get some sort of combination hero for the Bloodseeker, like a Magic Damage hero. Uh, maybe the Shadow Fiend, I'm not sure how that uh, combination is, but... Um, yeah, it's definitely gonna be interesting, yeah, it's hard to, uh, hard to tell at this point Ten because seconds. we never really see the Bloodseeker from this team. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, Skyrath would be, would have been my natural go-to hero, like Clockwork, Skyrath, put them together, you've got the Mystic Flare on the cogs, oh, yeah. but... Skyrath, why do you think he's for Whoa! Oh. Anti-Mage out of nowhere. Yeah, I guess that make, that hero makes sense there. Uh, like Alliance team doesn't have that much to kind of uh, lockdown, like no really instant stuns. I guess they have the bench stun, but it's not really the best way to catch an anti mage, mm -hmm. unless you get like a sheep stick or a yules on the lishrak. They don't really have a lot of ways to kill him with, and also the lishrak and the gyro course are not the strongest against the anti mage. I feel just like 
uh, whenever he gets really farmed, he can just split push them a lot, I think. Yeah, and then when you look at Alliance's damage, it is heavily magical. Leshrac and Gyrocopter, lots of alpha magic damage and rocket barrage and pulse nova. They, they've got minus armor from the Venge, though, so later on in the game, they probably do have a good time. But I think another thing here is that Bloodseeker, if you rupture someone, Anti-Mage has that freedom to jump on them. So they've either got to run or they've got to fight the AM. Yeah. That's true as well. Alliance's game plan has to be a lot uh, around like stacking up your team, like getting five men together, pushing towers, getting Roshans and stuff like that. But with the Bloodseeker, I think it's going to be hard to push through like with the Blood Rage, the Clockwork, and the Rocket Flare spams, and the Blood Right. Like creep clearing, that's, it's going to be really easy while the Anthemage split pushes. Mm -hmm. And not to mention that as well, that Team Secret has Dire, so Roshan might be a little bit more available for them. Good point as well. With the SF picked up, where does this put the Leshrac? Uh, Into a it's either going to be an aggressive trial in with Leshrac, Gyro, Shadowfin course, which seems more unlikely, but it's it's. Um, I think there's a good chance that fucking matter or AK is going to play the Leshrac as a support. Okay. They're one of the few teams really that does that. We saw them before this patch hit when they still had EGM. He was playing this, you know. His, his, his typical three and a half role, he was a support, but not really a oh, support yeah. on the Leshrac, and he'd go you know, double braces, Yule's BKB, and really pump up that Leshrac. But now, Radiant I've really enjoyed watching Epic Mad and Ake work together, because I always saw Ake as this really great support player with tons of potential, but the fact that he played with, you know, four greedy, basically, carry players meant that he yeah. was left sort of holding the weight. With Epic Mad there, they really do balance things out really nicely, so we'll uh, we'll see how they actually fare yeah, in this game. I definitely agree. Like their their playstyle really fi seems to fit like Leshrac support as well. They play this playstyle with Coddle, Leshrac, and Jungle like jungling supports like that. They make a lot of stacks for themselves, and they seem to be really efficient when they're not highly pressured. Get themselves up a fair amount of items. Shadow Demon is the ban out there. SD Dazzle, obviously, that really annoying combo. And if you can, com you know, get it, get in there with the Bloodseeker disruption into the Blood Right and Heal Bomb, that could get pretty nasty. But Puck is the pick from from Team Secret, so maybe you're right. It's going to be Bloodseeker jungle for Puppy. Yeah, I, I think this pickup really makes a lot of sense with the Blood Rage on the Puck, and like you have all this TP canceling, you have a lots of magic damage now. You have lots of like catch with the Clockwork and the Puck, and as long as the Bloodseeker and the Antimage is not pressured enough in the early game, I think, I think they're just gonna be too hard to deal with. But we'll have to see if Alliance can pressure them a lot in the early game, which which they by all means have the the power to do so. With. Five seconds remaining. So we're looking for a Bulldog hero here, right? Um, yeah, most what's likely. What's left? We've seen his great broodmother. We've seen, mm. you know, his nature's prophet. They're, they're both banned out. Yeah. Clockwork's taken. I think they're gonna look for the Beastmaster here. Oh yeah, that, that could work. Against an yeah. AM, that's like a great pick. Yeah, I like the lockdown you get and the Necrobook straining the mana and lots of damage as well. Also adds to your pushing and Roshan. I think it's a really good pick here, but we'll have to wait and see. Yeah, I don't see why not. It combos up nicely with Leshrac, Gyrocop to SF, and if the Bloodseeker does have a couple of those stacks up and is running, you know, rough, rough shot through your ranks and got the movement speed up to 7,000 or whatever ridiculous number he yeah. has, that, that roar can be good, but it's going to be the Viper. So maybe my idea there of the aggro tri lane, Lesh Gyro is going to be the plan, and they have the Viper down on safe lane. Yeah, they, this definitely makes me believe that it's going to be tri lane. Uh, this also makes make Team Secret. Uh, think about it as well because they don't really have that offlaner or like the stereotypical one so maybe Team Seeker would look to dodge the lane face and put a solo up there against a trial lane or something like that. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just wondering where, if Clockwork goes up to that safe lane then you have what the, the anti-mage mid because I don't see anti-mage doing that well in a sort of trial lane when you've got a Bloodseeker on the team. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. Mm, it's, it's really hard to put your lanes here like the main thing I think that's that they really just want them to make I mean, it's Dazzle, like, obviously. Oh yeah, like, just put Clockwork or the Pocket against the trial lane and have uh, Antimage and Dazzle against it's likely gonna be the Viper, which is not too bad of a lane for the Viper, honestly, but we'll have to see how it turns out. I keep looking at this Bloodseeker and thinking it's a core Bloodseeker, <laughs> like, that, that is my initial response for this, but Kuroki, looks like he's got some jungle items there, Stout Shield and Quelling oh, yeah. Blade. But how are we looking? Arteezy, they're just gonna go stock standard, it looks like. Yeah, not gonna mess like, yeah. around. Sai is also going for the boots here. Yeah, boots first. Observer would get that down as quickly as you can. Now, we're not going to see the lanes pan out just yet. And the fact that Lodo has gone for his ring of protection and a bit of regen, I think he's still going to uh, consider going up to that aggro tri lane. Uh, I think it could still be either with Zidon Bullet, just very versatile. I think 
they might decide if they get an info uh, based off Team Secret. If they show any of their heroes, they might try to decide their lanes based on that. Uh, otherwise, it looks like they might could just go dual lanes here. With the Vengeful and Viper top, and you see Leshrac and the Gyro heading towards the bottom. Artesia is waiting. Stout Shield and Tango's not sure what he's going to be building into yet. You know, he, with this, you can save up for the Ring of Health. You can go for a Quelling Blade, buy a Poor Man Shield. It's such a great way just to uh, you know, stay open in terms of laning phase. Yeah, I agree. You can also even go for the bodily if he turns out to be mid in the end, and like you can also buy a TP right off right the bat, stuff like that. Whatever happened to mid anti mage? We we saw that a couple of times in SEA, and I, I think Mushi played it once or twice. But uh, like, it's just it's definitely not optimal in any way in, by any means, but it's, it's just fun. something you you do when you want to dodge the lanes, basically. Okay. Well, so far, I think Mad is going to be heading up the top for now to help out Admiral Bulldog, but they're looking for a one v one here. I dodge out these lanes as much as they can, and right now it's down to mind games. Who gets the better bit of intel, and who gets the better matchup? Zai will be the clockwork off lane, heading up against Monster. Uh, Loader on the gyrocopter, AK playing that left rack mid. Pycat Shadowfiend against S4's Puck. That's the lane I'm going to be watching pretty closely, while Kuro with Sentry Wards. Looks like he's going to be heading into the jungle as that Bloodseeker. Up at top is Puppy Dazzle, supporting Artesia on the anti-mage. They're facing up against Effing Mad Venge and Bulldog on the Viper. Now, the, out of these lanes, bot lane, you've got to you've got to favor the gyrocopter against the clock. You know, trapping yeah. the cogs, rocket barrage, kind of melts him down. So Loader should be getting some decent farm there. So yeah, especially with the boots pick up on the clockwork as well, he's not going to have enough regen at all to sustain it against the gyro. He's, he's just going to look for some free XP here as much as he can, and then eventually leave the lane. And then top lane, Viper up against the anti mage. The harass is really going to annoy Arteezy. Surprise factor is going to be Kuro on this Bloodseeker. Once he hits, what, level 3 or 4, comes out of the jungle, things can start getting a little bit messy. Yeah, like, Alliance is definitely going to look to be aggressive in the top lane. It's in, if at any point things go wrong for them, they go slightly, uh, like, behind enemy lines, and Kuroki comes in with the, with the thirst. He can clean, definitely clean up, but the most of the action is going to look to assume when, like, the pockets level 6 or the blood secret level 6. It's gonna be quite easy to gank the S Shadowfin mid, I believe, with level 6 puck and the bardage. Definitely. Now, middle lane, this is a pretty heavy skill based matchup. S4, so far, last hit wise, 3 and 3 with the Shadowfin 7 and 2. Pycat doing very well early on. But we've already seen him. Well, the puck actually burned through a salve. Who's gonna get that bottle first? It's gonna be SF, yeah. Yeah, it looks like Pike out. Uh, this is just a matchup that when SF gets the really the early uh, souls from Necromastery, just goes really in his favor. And uh, yeah, some good last thing in the start can really turn the lane in his favor. But we'll see how things goes when he gets gank later on. What is Zai up to? Moving around in the jungle looking for a pull through or something like that, but Ake has found himself an invis rune. That could be the opening he needs to go and gang mid, but... He's actually heading down towards the bottom lane, putting a little more pressure onto Zai down here, and they've got no idea where this Lesh Rack is. Yeah, like, this is just so stressful for Zai and S4 right now, not knowing where their Lesh Rack is. Like, a good splitter of stun could even lead to S4 dying in the mid lane, or Zai bottom. So, actually, Zai is still real aggressive, though. Yeah, he's they really far up this lane, him. and Ake, they've, they know where he is. Ake is just gonna be, oh, there's the Cogster starting to splitter, not catch it. Yeah, but the Rocket Barrage going through, takes Zai down to about half HP, and Ake is still there, ready and waiting. A little pause comes out. So, does Zai die here, or can he TP out? I'm not sure, actually. Was this a pause? It seems like the server is lagging out to me. Oh, uh, no. That was a pause for Bloodseek. That, that was probably just in my end, then. No, yeah. it's, uh, it says S4 had a bit of freeze as well, so it might be in okay. servers. Okay, okay. Um, I'm not sure if Zai... Did actually see the last track yet? Because, for me, it seems like the invisible buff is still active on him. Just. He's, he's about to come out of it. Yeah, so... If Sidos noticed the uh, Lich Rack in time, he might just stun and just killed by that. But we'll see. If he's fast enough on the fingers, he might be fine. With a good... Oh, he actually has cogs and cooldown as well, but he has a teleport. We'll see. Yeah, he's got boots and TP. That, like, if he runs south, maybe he can TP out in time, just because Lich yeah. is so far back, but yeah. it's going to be a The only one. way he does it, though, is if he Lich Rack misses the stun first, I think. Oh, well, there's lightning to start things off. Stun, not going to land, but Rocket Barrage! Trying to clean up here. One more right-click out from Loader, and that'll be your first blood for Alliance up against Team Secret. Yeah, it's just like, even if he misses the of stun, it buys him enough time from side juking that the Rocket Brush is just going to melt him down. So, well played by Alliance there. And mid lane, S4 gets his bottle delivered. Whose boots are those? Kuroki's boots. So he has hit level 3. Probably going to be looking to 
make a move towards this mid lane or maybe up the top sometime soon because right now anti-mage he's got 12 last hits you know he's not doing awfully by any means the the fact that viper is 16 for two and am has managed to somewhat keep up is, is pretty impressive by rtz yeah, I agree. He has to ferry out uh, Tangos and a potion for himself now, though. But that, this is definitely a respectable uh, last for the anti-mage. Like, 12 against 18 It's not that shabby against the Vengeful Viper lane. Especially considering you have the Kuroki free from in the jungle, meanwhile. Now Zaya bot lane. He's really pushing it to the limits, getting up as close as he can to this creep wave to get some experience. Loader with the phase boots now should be able to make sure that he zones him out as efficiently as possible. Pop. Yeah, like even if he's not doing too hard in bot lane, he's getting level four and he's actually securing a lot of runes as well. Or not the first one, but this one is gonna get haste for himself. Could this lead to anything? He's got one in ban. Oh, he's level. Oh, he's level four. He could actually go for another point in battery assault here. Do a decent okay. amount of damage to RK, but Shadow Fiend waiting in the wings with a split earth. They, they could turn this around, but landing it on a hasted clockwork with battery assault, not the easiest proposition. Kuroki did make a move out the top, but they're not going to find anything up there. Oh. Puck has uh, caught up and overtaken the Shadow Fiend, in fact. 21 for 9, 19 for 4, as Pycat bringing his bottle back with some brand boots of his own. Have they got the jungle stacked up? No, not too much, actually. As S4 is going a little bit aggressive here, not going to tank a raise or anything. Pycat. Taking a lot of damage there for nothing in return. As oh, Loda solo kill. Find a C, yeah. Solo kill down with that clockwork. Yeah, even without cooldown, so that definitely has to be a misplay of some sort by Sai, I feel. But this in this mid lane is super. Oh, he's gonna get called in now. Coil and Kuroki's coming in. Blood right, gonna be thrown out. Split Earth, not gonna land, and S4 just bottles up. Oh, One more click out, he's got face shift, and he's perfectly fine. Kuroki now can turn and chase with the Orb of Venom, slowing him down. One more right click out from S4, and that's a double kill. Yeah, this is just when Bloodseeker thrives. They get a fr the initial kill on the Shadow Fiend quite easily, actually. But when the Leshra comes in in a bad position and they just start pummeling the right clicks on him, and the first comes out, it's just no way of Aki getting out there, so. Really good timing by uh, Kuroki and S4 there. It definitely shows that uh, they have played this before. So at this stage of the puck, this is something I've always really wondered. Oh, he, he's answered my question actually. How, like, how much do you prioritize dagger? Do you go for treads now to dominate the lane even further against the Shadow Fiend, or do you try and sort of sneak your way to that towards that blink a little bit faster? And he, uh, he goes, in my opinion, you definitely go treads here. Uh, it's just so good for laning, as you said. It gives you a lot of more mana upkeep with the thread swap, and it also gives you health with the strength threads toggled on. Uh, just a good item. It's really high value in the item, I think. For the cost, so yeah, I, I would agree with it. The blink dagger rush is something that you generally just want to do when you're slightly behind, in my opinion. Okay. Well, it's easy now with his ring of health. Going to be tanking through these crits a little bit, farming the jungle with Puppy healing him up. But there's there's no real way for Bulldog, uh, Bulldog, <laughs> Bulldog, <laughs> or Epic Man to take him down. That was a slip of the tongue. Didn't uh, didn't mean for that. The Twitch memes are too heavy. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, RTC not doing too hot in this early game. I like, he's actually doing fine for himself. He got the Ring of Health. But Secret's game plan is just to create a lot of attention onto the onto Sai, Kuroki, and S4 so that RTC can recover later on. But it's, yeah, he's actually doing not too shabby already. So, as you said, they, they can't really kill him unless they get a really good swap or something later on. But definitely going to be hard. And then Puppy, his positioning has been pretty damn good. He, If you can't kill AM because of Blink, you won't be killing the support behind him. But there's been no yeah. real opportunity to take down that Dazzle. Yeah. Now, Kuroki making his way across. Probably just wants to head over to that side shop, but if there's a kill to be had, why not take it at the same time? Bulldog a little bit far up. Here comes the rupture onto Viper, holding his ground a little bit there. Blood Right is going to silence up a couple. Puppy, now he's going to grave himself just in time, but Loda's here with the right-click tag, but cooldown as well. He's going to land onto two, maybe three. They finish off Puppy's Dazzle, but Arteezy hiding in the trees will find a little hidey hole for himself as Zai is boxed up. Walked into the middle of the rocket barrage. Puck now goes forward with the waiting ref and takes down two at the same time. Bulldog with Ake. They're both left alone. Maybe they can find a kill back onto this blood and they will do so, but Arteezy and S4 on the retreat. What was that? A three for three exchange? They're, They're looking for a little though. bit more. Bulldog, RK, taking a hefty amount of damage, but there's no killing blow there for Team Secret. Yeah, this was a little bit of an un unnecessary risk from Team Secret. They were fine just farming uh, farming in the early game. They had a good level seven, but they don't really have to do it. With that said, they killed the Gyrus, so it's not the worst thing ever. But it's it's a little bit unnecessary in the Or can Pycat get oh. another raise? He's got face shift, so he'll be able to dodge out a right click. And now Kuroki comes in with a blood right. It's gonna rupture as well. Oh, it's they're not cool. Gonna
Wait, the rupture on the Bajik is actually quite Maybe weird in my opinion. Like the level one the ruptures attack. don't don't seem to be that effective. But like the rank two or the rank three seem to be one of the more devastating ultis in the game. Yeah, basically at level two it's stand still or you die. Yeah. You drop down to like hundred HP and I'll just right click you twice. Sai is going on fucking mad here in the bottom jungle. Yeah, he's found him. Doesn't have hook shot, but he's got the level three battery assault and a rocket flare to boot, so that's gonna be a pretty simple kill and pick off there for Zai. Yeah, solo kill without having any vision at all. Really well presence of mind by Sai there, and it's also gonna give him the level six that he desperately needs. Can they kill Loader though? Like, with that level 6, we've seen how difficult it is for Zai to get in there under Rocket Barrage, maybe? Yeah. With, the, with the DD puck, it lasts for another couple of seconds. Yeah, if they hit all their spells appropriately on Gyrocopter, I think they get him, but Loda seems to know what's up, and he's just hiding around in the jungle. Waiting behind that tier 1 tower. Smoke up at top, the two supports. Happy Mad and Ake, they've got the stuns, they've, they've got plenty of damage with the Lightning Storm as well. But RTZ with one point up in Mana Shield, he, he's gone for stats, yeah, he must have done. One, two, three, four, five. Two points in stats. And Bulldog, pretty deep behind this tier one, going for that mech build as we uh, regularly see from the Vipers. Yeah. As you see, RTC has to know what's up here when Bulldog plays that aggressively. He's never done that so far in the laning phase. And with that said, RTC is probably looking or like thinking something is going to be around, so, uh, something's oh. going to be happening, so we're just hiding in the jungle here. Loader, TP's up the top at exactly the right time, because Secret were going for a smoke of their own down to bot, and it looks like they'll just try and trade off some damage onto the uh, onto the tier 1 towers. The yeah. Radiant tier 1 of bot is a little bit more damage, but with the fact that Pycat with 36 souls, Admiral Bulldog, just hammering away at this tier 1 on top, they should, they should trade off pretty evenly here. Oh yeah, Alliance should push a lot faster, but they should still favor Team Secret, I feel, because just of their power in the late game, and also the fact that RTC is farming the mid lane during the time. RTZ, 45 for 2, Arcade's Lightning Storm. Now, Alliance, once they get their mech up on Viper, is that going to be an indicator to actually go and just 5 man and push into towers? Or do you want to be a little more relaxed to stop? Because if you do that, Anti-Mage will be doing, like you're saying, split pushing. Do you want to be a little yeah. more relaxed and control your own jungle? Or do you want to actually go in all in? I think you kind of, we, whenever you play like a, a five month travel league, you always want to keep calm and like relaxed in a sense, but you also don't want to give them space. If you know what I mean? Like you don't want to stress towers that you feel is not favorable for you, like trades and stuff like that. But you definitely want to keep the aggression up. So you have to be smart about it. Kill rotions when it's a good timing for it. Like they're going for the mid now. Doesn't seem like secret is gonna get a good trade off this. So this is definitely a good push for them. But it, they really have to be smart about it so they don't give up unnecessary trades. But that, because that's when things start going wrong. Definitely, and if they can start taking map control now, when they're really starting to pad out the stats and they're getting Wave of Terror leveled up in, uh, in a short while, maybe they look towards the Roche Pit in the next mm, 10 minutes or so. I yeah, most likely. He's going BKB first. That's, that's a big weave, actually. On to three, the cooldown deterrent there, stopping S4 from initiating, but Kuroki looks like he's still planning to go in with the Rupture down, but there's no backup from the rest of his team. Yeah, I think he just wanted to maybe catch somebody when the, his teammates was putting out or something like that and just create space for our tours, essentially. 11 minute blink dagger and smoke for Puck. Maybe? Like, at this point, you know the anti mage is the primary target for Alliance. He's farming pretty well, he's going to be onto his damper fury soon. Do you try and bait him out? He pushes top tier 1 and you smoke up behind him? Because mm -hmm. you've got that blink to, to counter initiate. Yeah, I mean, like. The way to deal with anti Mage is definitely not ganking him in this game, I think. They don't really have the tools to do that. So it's just a lot more about shutting down the game frame, clear out the towers, get row chance, and like gain map control in that sense. And maybe like I don't think you're gonna kill this anti Mage in a long time unless he fights you. But try to like um, Yeah, divide a map in your favor and create space. Like uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Just okay, try to li limit how much sort of farming space he has. Yeah, I mean, you kind of, in a sense, have to oh, assume that he's gonna get farmed in this game. Got the green coil onto Pycat. That's four taking a hefty amount of damage, though. Swap back onto Pycat, who has a DD cooldown. Not gonna land onto anyone. Is that four? It's already on the retreat. And Kuroki with a movement speed buff, 564 <laughs> movement speed on him. Get him away, but that's smoke in. The reveal of the blink dagger. Not really getting too much done. They nearly kill Pycat, but nearly isn't quite enough. Maybe yeah, now, I mean, Zai has found Arcade in the trees, and this poor little Leshrang, the Rainbow Horse, he caught in the cogs, battery assault with the Rocket Flare, the cast time, actually this is Split Earth down, still going to get finished off though by the Illusion from Park and Zai, TP's out and away from Admiral Bulldog's Viper.
I mean, it's unfortunate that they didn't actually manage to kill Pycat there, but they're giving, at the same time, they're giving Archer so much space. He's just from the jungle this whole time. As you see, he's sitting on zero kills, zero assists, zero deaths at this point. Just no involvement at all in any aggression or team fights whatsoever. So they're just gonna look to, even if they die there, I think it's still fine for Secret. They're just gonna look for like a lot of space creation and make sure that RTC gets the farm he needs and make sure that the Lions doesn't ever get in a five man position where they can just pummel down towers. With Pycats, how close is he to that BKB? He's on a thousand gold after the Ogre Club. Um, I'm assuming BKB here, you know, usually if we see the Sand and Yasha, it's Yasha first into S and Y. So an yeah, early BKB for him and the same for the Gyro? Um, yeah, most likely. I think they really need them in it, in order to team fight and push towers effectively. It's not really what you want to do, like this early, especially with the change that was done to BKB a couple of months ago. But I think they, it's necessary. S4 is prepping himself, but actually over towards mid lane, Zai is uh, looking to get dropped here. Not enough damage just yet. The Blood Right will hold out Epic Mad and Bulldog. TP away from the Vengeful Spirit and down a bot, S4 has defended his tier 1, while Arteezy at the same time takes tier 1 on top, so great pressure and defense there from Team Secret, defending, playing aggressively towards mid, and then pushing at the same time. All three facets you want from your team. Yeah, like S4 is just going to play out the wave as much as he can, and having Papa sit behind him. Like very aggressive call on usage by Lola there. Yeah, just trying to take this tower as quickly and safely as possible. Puppy going in for the deny and S4 trying to secure this. Okay, no, he's not gonna get it. Tries for the final last click in there. Doesn't quite find it. Now RTZ still up at the top lane. Loader actually being sent back to try and fend him off while S4 orb forward after the blink bulldog is left to his own devices down a bot lane. But there's no push forward, no, uh, no advance there from Team Secret. Now, just noticed the overlay does say Frankfurt 2014. <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll get that fixed for the next game. Now, this Vengeful Spirit, 0, 2, and 3, wha wh what do you look for from the Venge? Is, is this mainly for defensive purposes now with a swap to get someone out of trouble? Because the aggressive play hasn't been that great from Epic Mad. Yeah, like, with the Magic Missile maxed out skill build, I think it's a really good here. Seconds, yeah, the loader at top. Zai has found him in the cogs, and Arteezy finishes him off with that mana void. While well, okay, being held out by the blood right from Kuroki, and this is just dominant uh, at this point in the game from Secret. Yeah, definitely. So they're, they're just so good at clearing up the map with teams, and Lions seem to never, whenever they go for these pushes, it doesn't seem to work because S4 is always there and clearing up the cool face, so it's really hard for them to come to lanes. Can Zai get out? The swap back stops his TP. He's probably dead anyway, but just to secure that kill because RT is escaping with 200 HP. Battle Fury completed. His farming time begins. And S4 was split pushing down at bottom lane. You know, they, they have taken full control of the map, but it, it seems over the past two and a half minutes, three minutes, they've done everything absolutely perfectly. Yeah, like just Sai and S4 are just creating so much space for them. Uh, as I said before, uh, they, they're just putting a lot of pressure, even though the gangsta might always work. It's just that Alliance's lineup doesn't really have the ways to deal with the Blood Secret in the puck. Oh, they're gonna go here again. Pike out has found him, they've found him. They can't get the Requiem off, and he will slow them down a little bit with that dying Requiem from him. But Loda, a little humming missile out, looking at the net worth graph. And yeah, four minutes ago, Alliance were in the lead. You know, it wasn't a great lead, five, six hundred, but that has plummeted massively. Secret taking about a 2k net worth lead, and experience looking towards the 4,000 mark. Yeah, it's just that Alliance doesn't really have the necessary needs to deal with the Puck, the Blood Pick, and the Antimage. They're just too too mobile of, of heroes, so it's just really hard to deal with them. And as a result, they have to they have to five man a lot, and it's really unfortunate for them because they have the lead, as I said. Yeah, just a little explanation about these seeding games. They uh, they go through this sort of double elimination bracket, and the top three teams will come back to the second side. Being swapped, the Cogs to hold them in place, but Loda, a lightning storm and rocket barrage, will manage to take down Zai here. Uh, sooner, rather than later, hopefully for them. He even throws the cooldown just to finish him off. He nearly sneaks his way out, but look at Arteezy cutting the wave between Tier 1 and Tier 2. And this comes back to the point you were making very late on into the draft. They don't have anything to deal with him. No Hex, no Silence, nothing to just hold him in place. Yeah, that's pretty much what's happening. And as a, yeah, a Secret is just looking to farm up a lot. You know, Sai, I don't think that play that it just did was very necessary. Who can in alone by himself without much of a chance of killing anyone off, but he's just trying to 
I don't know, create distraction. And as you, as you see, like, he doesn't really care about his farm because they have Kuroki, which is a really greedy four position in this game. Which means that they basically swap roles in this, in this game. And S4 with that Blood Rage on him. If oh, yeah. he can get his full arsenal of spells down onto pretty much any target, right? Uh, yeah. Maybe not the SF with a BKB, but yeah. Dagon or Wedding Rift Dream Coil, they just melt. Yeah, this is gonna be this is gonna be some crazy damage. Also, the Solar Crest now on uh, Kuroki, yeah, which they're gonna smoke now for Roshan. Die doesn't get caught in the smoke though. He's he's going for the Guardian Greed. It looks like this is something yeah. I've really been enjoying in in my own games. Buying arcanes on heroes like, you know, we, we saw from Titan to a hell of a lot. But even Clockwork, who's that initiator who needs a little bit of healing, it really does benefit from the, the tiny stance you get from it as well. But Guardian Greaves are a great item on Clockwork. Yeah, I agree. Even heroes like the Bristol back in, so heroes like that, it's really beneficial sometimes. So I like to pick up and Rosh is just going to die so fast now with the... What? Where yeah, did he so go? Yeah, that Solar Crest just doing work. Ridiculous amount of damage. This does free up Puppy, because he's not forced to go into that medallion, he's not going for urn or anything like that. Hook shot in, they're going to catch out Pycat here, and there's the damage, even with the BKB. Does come out a little bit late, but they're going to try and take down Zai, so the raise is not enough to finish him off. So Pycat holding his ground now, Kuroki chased down from Admiral Bulldog, the homing missile. Follow through, but that should be Kuroki going down to the homing missile in the end. S4 in the back is, oh, Kuroki's healing up actually. Is he going to be okay? What level's uh, the missile? It's level one. He's fine. Yeah, he's fine. He's fine. Now, Rocket Flare throwing out. S4 is still hunting people down, and he's got the damage to do it. He he's looking to go here, I think. Oh. oh. Well, is he gonna get uh, I think that just... RTZ gonna blink forward. Man, avoid one more hit out there from the punch. We'll find that and secure the kill. Man, Loader. Loader, Rocket Barrage. Does keep RTZ at bay for now. But now Bulldog though in the mid lane, he's really alone with the uh, S4 and uh, with the Shadow Fiend and the uh, Ventus were already dead. Cycle so holding his ground pretty well. Bulldog couldn't get the last click out there and Zai, no TP. Don't get taken down by that poison attack. Loader coming in for the bit of experience and shared gold, Kuro. Kuro's waiting around here. Blood right, rupture at the ready. I, I just like watching RTZ do this is is beyond me. He he's just constantly cutting waves. Yeah, but he just knows the fact that we talked about this whole game that, but the like, how is alliance gonna kill him? Like, it's gonna have to be a swap and a split or sound something like that. But even then, if they get a the perfect combination, he still has the ages, so he's perfectly fine. And at the same time, Papi has been farming this top lane for the the last three minutes or something. He's just not been involved. Oh, I can't. And he just doesn't have to. Oh, my God. Yeah. You're down to 24 souls, and you're going to drop even further now. The call down will uh, not land onto anyone. Just a little dance and jumps herself away. Kuroki gets stunned out. The Pycat, Man of Void, stops his TP, and RTZ finds the kill there. And he's four. Now has a chance to chase a few more people down. Lose real. Not the damage. Kuroki as well. Anybody but the Dream Coil will catch them both into the Blood Riot. Effing Mad going to drop here to S4's Waiting Rift. And Lotus Sun stop. RTZ now battling through it all. The Rocket Barrage is not going to be enough to finish off S4, but the split up is good. Catches RTZ. Zai with hookshot across and catches Lotus into the cogs. Admiral Bulldog is pushed back and Zai gets taken out, but Dagon from S4 finishes off that poor little gyro. RTZ re enters the land of the living. Secret basically only lose one. Under attack. Alliance, Shadow Fiend down to 12 souls now, Gyrocopter to even with that early rush BKB. You know, these are the items which are meant to win them team fights and win them convincingly. So then they can go and take objectives, go and take Roshan, push into tier twos and control the map, but they are getting slaughtered. Yeah, as you see, like, just S4 and, like, pretty much S4, he can just do what he wants in this fight. He's, he's getting out multiple illusory orbs and winning rifts, combined with the Coral and the Dagons, with the Blood Rage. It's just, like, they, they don't, if they don't kill the S4 early enough, I think it's gonna, just gonna wreck them in two fights, honestly. Level 3 Dagon. Yeah. It's, it's and getting... he's, even, he's getting closer to rank 4 as well, huh? <laughs> Yeah, at, at this point you just finish it. You just go go for the rank five and then start thinking about your next. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It just makes so much sense with the blood rage buff as well. Got bulldog with the drums, mech, and Yasha, Pycat, Nothing after the BKB. What are we looking at across the board for items here? Double bracer in our case. There's the that's the double bracer build I was talking about. But it's it's not the situation you want to be in. You, you want to yeah, have yeah. your scepter. You want glimmer cape and things like that. 
Uh, a, a few utility these, items. Yeah, these bracers are not game winning by any means. They're just. He realizes that they've seen a bad spot. And oh really man. Pycat dropped to a quarter of his HP by S4 jumping in, and S4 just jumps himself straight back out with that haste rune. Trying he's to just get gonna away. Run away. He's, he's fine. Yeah. And then Zyze. Look at that. That forces so much rotation. Four heroes in the middle lane. Now even Loda showing up as well. Yeah. Weave onto Bulldog with Zai waiting in the wings. Hookshot at the ready, and there's the level 4 Dagon as S4 made his way all the way back. Where, does he still have a homing missile on him? Where, where is it? Oh, it's here. I found it. Oh, he's in the, he poured it he's back. He's going to take like 50 damage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing whatsoever. Yeah, that ability rank 1 is just pretty much underwhelming. RTC top lane. He's going to go in a bit. Send your illusions in. Even the illusions are pretty difficult to kill here. Loader tanking them up, losing. The oh, time. whoa, whoa, whoa! Right Leshrak obliterated by S4. 10-0 and two on this puck right now. And Bulldog, time to make your uh, make your retreat, buddy. This tier two is nowhere near safe. And with that pickoff, they're gonna look to. Oh, pretty, oh they're going in. Maybe that side. Hook shot across to his teammate and gets himself out. But a good weave onto Loda and Bulldog. The Cogs will keep them at bay as maybe now Secret look to turn. Kuroki's caught with the Viper Strike, but where's the uh, where's the counter initiation? RTZ is up at top. S4 is ready. Dream Coil off cooldown now. Blink in, waiting Rift. Oh, he's going to go in with the Dream Coil to hold him back. Kuroki graved up and cooldown will land and will finish off that little Blood Seeker. Actually, the Poison Attack from Bulldog will do that job. S4, good fire, Epic Mad. It just ceases to exist. S4 jumps in and says goodnight. Arteezy, in the meantime, up at this top lane, pushing into tier 3. Yeah, I mean, at this point, Secret, they, all they're really doing at this point is just, they're going in on one lane. Whenever there's rotation, they go in on another lane at the same time. Just really smart. Now, yeah, S4. I'm S4 sorry, things. but S4 is just destroying people so quickly. I'm watching mid lane where Zai is getting pummeled by Bulldog, but S4 just gets an insta kill up at top. Yeah, he's actually 12-0 and uh, really, well, really well played by this guy. That's why he's one of the best pucks around. Absolutely. I mean, we were talking about his Queen of Pain earlier, but man, this puck. I mean, just those kind of heroes that really seems to fit him a lot. Like the Queen of Pain, the puck, the really mobile ones, even the Magnus to some extent. Mobile, aggressive, playmakers, but also pretty hefty damage dealers. Yeah. Go for the solo pickoffs, but can also be that, you know, synergy hero that brings everyone together and seems to go to work because Arteezy, you know, he's not 12 and 0, but he is 2 0 and 4. 265 last hits with Manta, Battle Fury, and BKB on the courier just delivered to him. Does that indicate fighting? Because so far, split pushing, he hasn't had any problems blinking out and TPing. It doesn't feel like, uh, oh, I need to BKB to be able to take towers. That's uh, okay, we're going to go and brute force them right now. Yeah, I think it's definitely a fighting item. Uh, like, they could probably just extend the game a lot much longer if they wanted to, but Team Secret is not a team that's just going to sit back when they have a good lead. They're just they're just going to pressure you. So I think that's what they're going to do. They're going to look for team fights now with RTC. Like, I think they realize that he has what they need for, ta for taking fights right now. Oh, well, Roshan, we'll find out when he respawns in about 30 seconds' time. The four-man... Incursion into the dire jungle from the Radiant. <laughs> Gonna be stopped pretty quickly by Arteezy split pushing because he's onto the racks already. Uh, now uh, he turns on the Manta style, turns to fight, and Bulldog drops to half HP. Okay. Is this the man fight you actually want to go into? The Mana Boy drops into 300 HP and now Arteezy just gonna TP himself away. So a uh, BKB force there, the rest of the team now can start making their way in. Arteezy didn't even have to use his BKB there. And at the same time, they get fucking mad again in the middle. Buddy. Oh, that's Where does S4 go from here, I think? With the big on 5 having it finished. I... Like, the world is his oyster. He can go for Aghanim Scepter against these BKBs, but I I don't think there's any, you know, super optimal item. He can yeah, go for yeah. Hex, Aghanims, go for an E-Blade if he wants to. Yeah, I think even if the game goes late enough, he might consider the Octarine Core, I think. Well, that could be nice. Yeah. We have seen him drop pretty low and sort of escape by the skin of his teeth a couple of times. Bulldog weaved up there as S4 is going in onto RK. Finish him off with the Dream Coil and Arteezy just walks in. Dodges out a couple of spells there with his BKB and Loader. Pops his own cooldown, gonna land onto two. 
And uh, Secret is going to back themselves up for now. Puppy still has heal, still has grave, and will throw that out onto Zai as S4 continues to hammer away at these supports. Takes down another. Zai will finally go down in the end, but Artiski and S4 demolishing Alliance in the middle of their own team. They're going to hold on to this tier 2 for now. As Secret running low on mana. Kuroki doesn't give a damn though. 650 Luka Speed goes in. He's going to turn around and fight because he's taken down by the Rocket Barrage. And Shadow Fiend with that last minute Requiem. Now that, that's, that's a fight where you're okay as a Secret. Maybe we can't go in so deep so fast. Yeah, I mean that was just a little bit of cocky play to be fair. But, uh... I mean, it's not going to change the game by any means. They're still, they're still just going to go for the next Roshan, I think, and just... Yeah, I mean, it doesn't change the game that much. Just as you see, like, that's not the winning fight that Alliance needs. They need team wipes. But yeah, they... Team Secret just... Yeah, they have to consider the fights a little bit better, maybe. Oh, wait for the next Roshan. They did just scout it out. Another minute until the big guys back up, though. This does allow Alliance to reset. They can push out bot lane, farm their own jungle for a short while. But with Basher over on the Anti-Mage, are we seeing any new big items for, for Alliance? You know, Helm of the Dominator doesn't quite cut it. Uh, on no. both SF and Gyro, in fact. Mm, that's a little bit surprising that they both decide to go for that. Four. Four man jaunt away. He was looking for the cheeky little pickoff in the Radiant Jungle. Find Epping Mad or someone like that. Jump in, kill, jump out. Bulldog, though, doesn't have the same opportunity to jump himself away. He's got no mobility whatsoever. And these illusions with the rupture forcing him away. The Blood Right will come out and starts him up. A little bit of damage to him as well as Bulldog. Is he going to get taken now by... Yeah. Oh, man. S4 jumps in with the Dagon. Meanwhile, in the back end of the fight, Kuroki is stunned up. But Arteezy takes down Epping Mad. The Rocket Flare will finish that kill off. And look at that. Three hits. And Image takes down the last track in three fell swipes of his golden shiny blades and Pycan. What's your escape plan? TPing out means gonna get bashed. BK yes, that's the bash. Maybe now TP. Requiem in the fog. Okay, that's the play. Turn out. Try and kill Zai, but he's graved our puppy. Not gonna get dropped, Zai. If that grave had uh, ended a little bit sooner, maybe he gets killed by Roshan, but that is perfect timing for Secret. Team wipe for them into the Rosh pit and Aegis the Immortal. And they get given over to Arteez. Yeah, it couldn't have been better, honestly. Uh, I think, yeah, I hate to be the party pooper, but I guess this is the time where you just have to call it if you're Alliance. Like, just realize what you're doing wrong and go for the next game. Yeah, if you look at the Shadow Fiend, you know, 18 souls, you need time to build them back up. Maybe, yeah. like, maybe they have one more fight in them, but I I'd be inclined to agree. What After one more fight, Ad okay, maybe not like this. Admiral Bulldog TP's the tier 2. He's not going to get gone on here, but it's only a matter of time as S4 jumps forward. Epic Man, I'm going to catch this one. If none of the others, I'll find that kill on camera. S4 with a quick and easy over onto Epic Man. Bulldog is doing a hefty amount of damage. Decent over there onto S4, but up at top. Flip push is real. Oh, easy. Taking down the ranks up there. And it's still a stages to work with. Also, as we talked about before, S4 is actually opting to go for the Octarine Core, it seems. It's almost a pickup. No, or nice. this, this can't be a Bloodstone, right? I would really question the Bloodstone here, so it has to be a train. It's it's basically end game. Bloodstone, you know, give you a nice amount of mana regen, a, f a bit of HP and mana, but I I want to see the the Octarine core definitely. Yeah, I mean like the Octarine really gives you enough mana and HP, I think anyway. So why not go for that instead? So I think it's gonna be it. He needs about a thousand gold more. Kuroki, he finished off that Desolator quite some time ago, and he's got 1,200 gold in the bank saved up. No, no BKB yet for him, which is, is kind of surprising. He's gone all out aggression, damage, minus armor. Helps against buildings as well, but we're going to see the wraparound on the Pycat. Arteezy, where's your first hit bash now? Not going to be coming out just yet, but Puppy in the back lines. Admiral Bulldog catches him out with some poison attacks, and Puppy stunned up. One more hit, and Bulldog finds him. Jeff picked up as a cover as Arteezy. BKBs and fights. There's the bash we were looking for. Bulldog evaporates under the damage and then Lotus caught out. He's in the middle of the damage train as they will find the kill onto Zai. Arteezy though battling through it all. It's more still available in Epic Man being taken down. S4 finishes off Loda and Pycat is the last man standing. S4 and Arteezy, the two playmakers that have really opened up this game for Secret. Looking for the kill onto Pycat and they'll, they'll find it eventually. They got off cooldown in one second's time and there's the kill.
Yeah, I mean, Alliance is getting good kills, but just doesn't cut it when they don't get the puck or the anti-mage. They really have to get those, and now it looks like they're gonna go for the top racks with with no... Do they have buybacks ready? We've got five buybacks from Alliance, but... Oh. I mean, like, if, even if they use, like, a couple of buybacks, I don't think it changes much. No, at this point, Alliance, they need items. Buying back here is, you know, gonna stem the flow for 30 seconds or a minute or something like that. So yeah, there yeah. we go. They tap themselves out. Our first game of the day is gonna end up with Team Secret winning over Alliance. I think this this is a game that really comes down to the draft. I'm happening like uh, with the like with the Antimage, it's a really smart pickup against the. Uh, the typical way of drafting in the meta game nowadays with like Lishrak, Gyrocopter course with not a lot of lockdown and like with the puck as well, like 